Worldwide, endometriosis affects 10% of women during their reproductive years. These are their stories. First gynecologist that I went to, I asked her if anything looked abnormal and she just laughed at me. I literally could not do anything. I was just laying there. I was vomiting. I was sweating. Nothing helped. So I went to urgent care and they just told me I had bad periods. And I was just losing it because I was like, is this really just my period? Like, is this how it's going to be for the rest of my life? Your suffering doesn't matter. It's just period You're cramps. You're overreacting. Women are so emotional. Your pain, Your pain isn't, isn't real. real. Endometriosis is an abnormality in endometrial tissue in which it starts to grow outside of the uterus. This tissue is the lining of the uterus that provides nutrients for a fetus during development. So let's test your endometriosis knowledge. Approximately how many people are directly affected by endometriosis worldwide? Is it A, 100,000 women, B, 30 million, or C, 200 million? If you selected C, you are correct. Endometriosis is prevalent in about 10% of women during their reproductive years. The endometrial tissue ends up scattered around various internal body parts, like our ovaries, fallopian tubes, outer uterus, bladder, intestines, and rectum. This causes extreme pain during a woman's menstrual periods and during sexual intercourse. The way a usual menstrual period works is that after a hormonal signal, the endometrial tissue fills with blood, thickens, and then breaks down. But in endometriosis, there's nowhere for this blood and tissue to go. So instead it builds up and creates extreme and painful pressure in the abdomen. Since this displaced endometrial tissue is seen as foreign tissue in the body, the immune system is also attacking it, which causes scarring and adhesions. The severity of these symptoms increase over time and the scarring could cause complications in pregnancy. So what causes endometriosis? Well, it turns out there's no definitive cause of this condition. However, scientists have suggested that there may be a genetic component. For example, one study found that in women who had at least one first-degree relative with endometriosis, they were six times more likely to suffer from it themselves. However, the inheritance of endometriosis is not determined by a single gene, but rather multiple genes as well as environmental interactions. When it comes to diagnosing endometriosis, one of the most common tools used is laparoscopy. In this procedure, a surgeon fills a patient's abdomen with carbon dioxide, which allows the surgeon to see around the organs more clearly. Then the surgeon takes a peek around the pelvic organs in order to look for obvious signs of endometriosis, such as scarring and cysts in these organs. Which of the following are common effects of endometriosis? A. Chronic pelvic pain. B. Painful intercourse. C. Painful defecation. Or D. All of the above. If you said D, you're correct. The symptoms of endometriosis vary based on the severity and location of the endometriotic tissue. Each individual may have a variable experience with endometriosis. It's important to differentiate between endometriosis and period symptoms. Period symptoms include cramps in the lower belly or lower back, bloating, breakouts, sore breasts, or feeling tired. Endometriosis symptoms are more extreme on the other hand. The most common physical symptoms are chronic pelvic pain, painful periods, painful intercourse, painful defecation, and painful urination. Another byproduct of the chronic pelvic inflammation that is associated with endometriosis is infertility. The effects of endometriosis don't stop at physical symptoms. However, they affect women everywhere they go. A study conducted across 10 countries gathered information from 1,418 premenopausal women with no prior surgical diagnosis of endometriosis. Those women underwent laparoscopy to investigate their symptoms. The results of this study proved that women with endometriosis had a lower physical health-related quality of life and work productivity than women without endometriosis. 
This loss of work productivity consisted of an average of 10.8 hours of work lost weekly. The treatments are focused on addressing the most common symptoms of endometriosis, pain and infertility. There are three main treatments for endometriosis. The most common treatment offered is medical therapy through hormonal manipulation. This hormonal manipulation is achieved through progestins, oral contraceptives, and gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists. The goal of this kind of therapy includes inhibition of ovulation, abolition of menstruation, and creating a stable steroid hormone environment. This therapy is effective in treating pain, but it is a long-term solution, meaning that if you stop it, it is likely that the pain will return. Also, medical therapy may come with various unpleasant side effects and also decreases the chance of conception. If a woman does not find medical therapy effective or does not want to decrease her chance of pregnancy, there is an option for conservative surgery. This surgery is effective in treating pain by removing endometriotic growth or scarring. Also, this surgery may enhance the chances of fertility. Another option is definitive surgery, a surgical procedure that removes the ovaries and endometriotic growth to permanently treat pain. Sometimes, it also involves the removal of the uterus and fallopian tubes. Overall, definitive surgery results in menopause. Therefore, this may be an appealing option for women that do not want to get pregnant, as this procedure provides a final relief from pain caused by endometriosis. These are the three common treatment options recommended by doctors for women with endometriosis. Overall, two-thirds of symptomatic women use medical therapy with oral contraceptives and progestins to address their pain. The remaining third may benefit from conservative or definitive surgery, depending on their desire to conceive. Approximately how many years does it take for a woman affected by endometriosis to get diagnosed? A. 1.7 years B. 3.7 years C. 6.7 years If you chose C, 6.7 years, you are correct. Unfortunately, on average, it takes women 6.7 years to be diagnosed with endometriosis. So how do we improve the diagnostic delay regarding endometriosis, you may ask? For society as a whole, we need to invest money in research for women's health conditions, including but not limited to endometriosis. All of the current treatments for this particular disorder come with notable risks. In response, more research should be devoted into discovering alternative, safer treatment options. Unfortunately, due to social stigma surrounding the discussion of women's reproductive health, many women are hesitant to speak about their symptoms. In response, we need to eradicate this stigma to encourage these women to speak up about their reproductive issues and overall raise awareness. So for women who think they may have endometriosis, the first thing you can do is talk to your doctor. If your menstrual pain is not normal and you're suffering from the symptoms mentioned earlier, such as heavy bleeding and pelvic pain, speak to your doctor immediately. If you feel that further investigation needs to be done, insist on further testing from your doctor. Your pain is valid and should be addressed accordingly.